Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This episode will be painting a ship graveyard environment and I'm gonna take you from the initial sketch to the final image. Also along the way I'll give you some tips and ideas on how you can improve your digital painting. So stay tuned till the end to see how the final image turned out. My name is Victor, I'm an illustrator and concept artist working in the video games industry and I really hope you guys will enjoy this video and find it helpful. Alright, let's start. Alright, so first thing we start with the reference images. I had an idea to create a ship graveyard, so I grabbed lots of photos from the internet of different vessels, like kind of rusty, laying around, uh, abandoned ships and so on. I grabbed the ones I liked the most and the ones that contain information that I found useful. And I started with a very simple sketch, it's basically a line work sketch. Nothing fancy, really rough, but it is important to have this sketch. Basically the drawing part is the most important. Once you have that working out for you, you can put down the values and you can put down the colors and it's all gonna be fine. Next step is pretty straightforward. You just need to fill in your main elements with flat color. So right now you shouldn't worry about any fancy brushes or what kind of marks you're placing. Just take a basic Photoshop brush and fill in your main elements, or like the background, the middle ground and the foreground and make sure there is a very cohesive and realistic relationship between the values that you're using. I'm working directly with color, I found this to be a little bit faster, so one way to go about this is to have good reference images and to extract the color from there. But in case you're a little bit unsure to start with color right away, you can go ahead and make a black and white value sketch. Just make sure that those values are very accurate and they represent exactly what you want to show because the key to a believable image is having a really consistent and nice value matrix. Alright, so only after I'm sure in my value sketch and I know that my composition is more or less working out, I can proceed with describing the form. And the first thing you want to do is probably establish where is your light coming from. In this case, the light is sort of coming from the right uh, diffuse type of light. And once I know that, I can go ahead and you know, describe the shapes and the forms I have in the image. Even at this step you might have noticed that I just changed the proportions a little bit because I wasn't happy with the composition so uh, it doesn't matter what stage you are in the painting, if something feels wrong to you, don't be afraid to change it up. In my case it also helps to have a few layers, separate layers to work on. It doesn't have to be a lot of them, sometimes you can just split the background, middle ground and the foreground into layers, maybe your focal point, it just helps to have it's separate because especially in the beginning of the image I know for sure that I will change the proportions maybe change the lighting and so on and you know that really helps not to waste time but of course if you like to paint on one or just really a few layers also not a bad idea and it actually adds to getting a more painterly result especially if you're painting on one layer And you also might have noticed that I don't really work zoomed in. Uh, the way you see it on the screen is because I'm zooming in the image, but uh, me personally, I really work zoomed out and this kind of works out with the thing I mentioned in the beginning, when you kind of want to assess your the painting as a whole and you want to see if your values work. So that's easier to do if you're looking at the, at the image as a whole and preferably, you know, in smaller dimensions, time to time at least. I'm also using the navigator on the right side of the screen. It, the size of it it's like a YouTube thumbnail so it's really small and it really helps me understand maybe if something is not working or if the composition is not working or the values are off so I'm kind of glancing at that time to time and pretty much zooming in only when I've reached the stage when it's time to paint details. Alright now let's have a quick look at how I go about painting and describing the forms better and then I'm gonna be back to talk about the final stage of the painting.
All right, so I guess another thing worth mentioning is to not stay stuck in one place for too long. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of jumping around the image, placing marks here and there, but you know, never spending more than a couple of minutes in one place because I don't want to overdo with the details and I don't want to, you know, load the image with unnecessary brush strokes and sometimes it can lead to a mushy type of painting. And that's why I'm trying to be a little bit economical with my brush strokes and kind of be very deliberate about the marks I'm placing. And especially in this painting, you can probably notice in the end when you will see the final image that I kind of overstayed my welcome with the detailing process. I guess I got carried away and I um, started to work a lot on textural information, on you know adding more details. It didn't help make the image more readable and it also didn't add to the story or anything like that. So I think. It's it's also important to know when to stop doing those you know detailing work and all that stuff the readability of the image is more important than you know just embellishing it with lots of marks and unnecessary details and you know value differences All right, so let's have a look at the final image. As you can see, I spent a little bit more time polishing some areas around the focal point. I added quite a bit of textural information on the ship, and now in retrospect, I'm kind of thinking that I overdid it a bit. I've also added a few smaller shapes to add to the contrast between uh, you know, bigger and smaller shapes overall in the image. And I spent some time on adjusting the values a bit more and maybe the colors. So that would be it in terms of polishing and finalizing this quick sketch. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps a lot. Also, don't forget to drop any questions you have in the comment section. I'm trying to answer all of them. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one, coming soon.